सुरा मेर मज्ज पमाद ठाना वेरमणि सिखा पदंग समाधियामी वी हैव ऑल हर्ड ब्यूटिफुल पोएट्री एंड हिट सॉन्ग्स रेड साइजेबल लिटरेचर हर्ड ऑफ और इवन बीन टू वाइन एंड शैम्पेन टेस्टिंग्स एंड अदर सच गैदरिंग्स ऑल प्रोफेसिंग द ग्लोरी ऑफ एल्कोहॉल एंड अदर इंटॉक्सिकेटिंग सब्सटेंसेस इन एवरी पॉसिबल मैनर बुद्धा आस्ट हिज फॉलोअर्स टू स्ट्रिक्टली ऑब्जर्व ऑल द फाइव शील्स द पंच शील गो हैंड इन हैंड अ पर्सन कैन नॉट चूज टू फॉलो विच एवर शील्स टू हिज अ हर लाइकिंग द पंच शील आर नोन एज वारित्य शील्स मीनिंग देयर बाय दैट दीज फाइव थिंग्स आर नॉट टू बी डन दैट इज any kind of theft debauchery lying killing or intoxication is not to be done varitya is also known as vrat that is taking vows and these vows are to be observed 24 into 7 for 365 days a year shil means all those things which pushes or urges a person's mind to move in the right direction thus making our heart pure and at peace सुरा मेर मज पमाद ठाना वेरमणि सिखा पदंग समाधियामी सुरा सुरा इज द सब्सटेंस फ्रॉम विच द वाइसेस टेन टू अराइज मेर स्टैंड्स फॉर सॉलिड इंटॉक्सिकेटिंग सब्सटेंसेस मज इज अ स्टेट इन विच द बॉडी वांट्स टू रिलैक्स और इट कैन आल्सो बी सेड टू बी अ बम्बूजल्ड और ड्रंक स्टेट ऑफ माइंड also known as madmast pamad thana is a state or condition in which the mind is no longer controlled by a conscience but is commanded by the addiction of such inebriating substances vairmani that is vrat or taking a vow sikha padang is the steps of education sam means equal adhyami means to embrace therefore this means that i equally embrace the steps of education by taking a vow to stay away from the vices that arise from all intoxicating substances i vow to never be in a drunk state i vow to never let the addiction of any intoxicant to command my mind or my body now the question is why the fifth shield was required in ancient india the immoralities of theft lie intoxication etc did not exist the foreign raiders and infiltrators who came to india brought such vices with them and cunningly managed to spread them here they knew it well that if they tried to wage wars and forcefully make the native people their slaves it will only be a matter of time when the slaves would stand up against them in mutiny and fight because their culture and societal ethics would still continue through generations thus an easier and effective way was to penetrate the vices of debauchery theft lying revenge killing and intoxication into the families of these natives and break the backbone of the society thereby making them bonded to their own moral depravity and slaves to the foreign infiltrators a person who had once been corrupted would give away everything he had little by little including his land money and even his wife and children for the smallest amount of intoxicants to satisfy his addiction hence making these substances so wicked destructive and detrimental to the overall cultural ethics and norms accordingly various forms of alcohol and other pleasurable entities were brought to india that encroach upon the indian society till date the invaders insinuated these vices to the people of india in such artful ways that they never had to physically chain the natives the moral faults they introduced had put our people on an eternal leash of shame regret and addiction at the time of buddha these vices were almost uprooted from india 
Interestingly, today in India, it is ingrained in our minds since childhood that once you have consumed alcohol, it gets very difficult to get rid of it. This is a myth. Another myth that has been hammered in well is the romanticization of alcohol and the nobility of its consumption in today's modern lifestyle. Today, in the times of corona pandemic, when India followed a complete lockdown, a lot of people who happen to be addicted to alcohol, cigarette and other intoxicants have all managed to survive with or without them. Notably, some bought them at skyrocketing prices, others got them smuggled in, but a smart few took this opportunity to quit their addictive habits and not consuming it at all, thus proving that such addictions are only privileges and not a need to live life happily. It is very important to know how the habit of intoxication works. With this, it becomes a lot easier to give up the addictive substances. Any habit is a consequence of repeatedly doing something over a period of time and once it gets implanted in one's mind, then it becomes very difficult to let it go. During the period of Buddha and the Ashokan era, and even after that, the vices of intoxication were easily given up by the people of India, simply by strictly observing the punch shield, and that was the time when India had the largest geographical extent and was in its most flourishing period. The first time when a person is introduced to alcohol or any other such inebriating substance, one's experience is not even minutely pleasurable because alcohol or other intoxicants like tobacco, cannabis or marijuana do not taste sweet or even smell nice. Moreover, the result of their consumption includes severe headache, disorientation and nausea. Clearly, with such consequences, the consumption of any such entity cannot become a habit right away. But still, many people are suffering from the menace of addiction. Let us understand how and why this happens. When any intoxicating commodity is consumed, firstly, it attacks a person's senses of smell, taste, sight, hearing and touch. The system which keeps us aware and vigilant thereby decreasing its efficiency, resulting in a partial or sometimes even total loss of control of one's body. Once an intoxicant is ingested, one's blood pressure starts decreasing, hence relaxing the body and obstructing its machinery. It is a fact that a body inherently prefers to stay in a stable state, where all particles are at rest. This is true for all bodies and this state is what is known as Mar. Mar or the inherent laziness of human body is active 24 into 7 and its only job is to keep one's body in a relaxed, sleepy condition. The Mar is against the productivity of human body. Instead, it wants the body to become futile and debilitated so that the death file can get activated. In this entire mechanism, alcohol and other such substances help the dead file to run its course. In fact, high doses of any sort of intoxicant has proved to be fatal. Thus, addiction is nothing but the repetitive reminder of mar and death file to ingest as much of these inebriating substances as possible. The effects of such addiction involve low energy levels, laziness, disorientation, weakness, aimlessness, lacking in studies or work, irritation and mood swings, other irregularities in behavioral patterns. There are some people who understand how addiction works and do not let it overcome them through their willpower and efforts. But then, there are always certain others who cannot understand this or even choose to ignore this and let their vices take over their mind and body. These are the ones suffering from the so-called addiction. Curiously, it is a well-known fact that liquor consumption is not a noble act and nor is it taken as a sign of good behavior. Because if it were good, then a father would give it to his 
infant's child and the government would sell it without warnings like any other beverage in the market the craving for alcohol and other intoxicants is not naturally present in one's body but is just a result of an incessant reminder from the inherent need of the body to relax and blockade all its productivity one's body does not need any intoxication it is the weak mind which plays tricks on one's senses and forces one to lose control and give in regular consumption of alcohol tends to collapse a person's integrity cause them physical harm and wrecks personal relations furthermore it also disrupts other facets of a person's life like loss of ability to work leading to a deprivation of money and property thereby resulting in a fragile society and a weaker nation arguably the consumption of liquor has not proved to be beneficial to anyone be it its consumers or its producers and sellers some might argue that the revenue collected from the sale of alcohol and tobacco is significant but it is to be observed that the expenditure that a government is burdened with to tackle the medical health and law and order hazards arising out of sale and consumption of alcohol is way more than the revenue generated from its sale interestingly the producers and sellers of intoxicating substances are also at a loss as they do not follow buddha's principle of samyak ajivika which states that one's earning should be from an upright source else it will have grave adverse effects over their family and society therefore it is crystal clear that alcohol and other intoxicants are not beneficial in any manner to anyone and their addiction is only a matter of one's will power to follow the righteous path of panchshil नमोते स भगवत वह तो सुना संबूद स नमोते स भगवत वह तो समा संबूद स नमोते स भगवत वह तो समा संबूद स